What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Today's video I'm going to show you my brand new kayak trolling motor setup for the Hobie PA-12. Now this thing is completely different than the one I built for the Vibe Seaghost 130. So in this video I'm going to walk you from the front to the back, show you exactly how it's built, how I power it, and then we're going to put it on the water and see how it does. Check it out. So before we get into today's video, I do want to say if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button and check out some of my other videos. You might find something that you will like or it could help you out. Uh, today I am filming in the garage and it is super hot, so all the doors are open. You're probably going to hear some traffic in the background and some birds chirping. I apologize for that, but it is freaking hot outside right now. So this video, like I said earlier, is on the trolling motor setup that I have in my Hobie PA-12 now. This build is completely different than the build that I did for the Vibe Seagos 130. If you hadn't seen it, I'll put a card right in here somewhere. You can check it out. Uh, I did a full setup on the Vibe, put the trailer motor in the back. I had a push button, electric trim on it. I had a Bigsby steering control to the side. It was super cool. A lot more in depth building wise and complicated building wise than it is to build one of these setups. These setups are nothing compared to what I went through building that other one. But if you haven't seen it and that's the kind of kayak you have, or if you're wanting to put a, you know, a rear trolling motor on your kayak, check out that video. You might like it. It might help you out. In this video, I'm just going to do a walkthrough and show you kind of how this one's built. I cannot take credit for this build or this design, however. This is all over YouTube. A lot of guys have done this before. It's nothing new. Uh, this setup right here that I have in my hand, I actually didn't even build. I was in the process of building this when, you know, about two months ago, me and Chris went to Georgia to pick up that used Hobie PA-14. And when we got there, Chris bought it and it came with this setup. And I was in the middle of actually, you know, ordering everything to build this for mine. Chris didn't want it, so I bought it off of him, saved me some money and saved me some time. I didn't have to go through and build it. So, but I will show you how it's built. I mean, it's, it's super easy. Now, this also can work for a Titan or any kayak that's out now, which there's a lot more pedal drive systems out than there was. So if you've got a kayak and you've got a, some sort of a pedal drive system or a hole just in the center of your kayak and you can plug that hole, you can put a kayak there. It's not hard at all. This one is for the Hobie. You know, you have to order the Hobie cassette. And what I have here is a trolling motor from Amazon. This is called a Sevlor, S-E-V-Y-L-O-R. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But it's built by Coleman. Uh, the reason you have to use this or like a water snake is because of the motor size at the bottom. A regular trolling motor has a big motor at the bottom and it will not fit the hole on a Hobie. You have to go with something small and compact. These actually are perfect for the build. And the water snakes, like I said, I think the water snake is identical to this. Uh, even, even the head units, I think, are identical. So it's basically the same. You could probably go with either or and it'll work just fine. This is, like I said, an 18 pound thrust. So it's not super fast. It's going to get you from point A to point B. You're going to cover a lot of water and with a lot less effort, especially if you're fishing tournaments and they allow it. The tournament that you're in allows trolling motors on the kayaks. This is great. So if you have to go across a lake or across a river in your kayak to get to a certain spot you want to fish, you can just turn this on and go and rig up while you're on your way. So anyway, what I'm going to do is show you how it goes in. I'll show you how I power it, how I ran the wires, and then we're going to go take it to the lake, put it on the water, and we'll see how fast we can get it and how well it steers. Now, one thing I will say to build this, it's the same as my last trolling motor build. You just remove the head off the trolling motor. There's just a couple Phillips head screws. You take that off. You cut your shaft down until I think this one's about 16, 16 or 18 inches. It's not very long. You cut the hole, you know, you just drill the hole the same size as the shaft in the center of your Hobie plug or cassettes, what they call it. Then you just slide it over and put it back on. Now, one thing you have to make sure you do is you have to make sure that you lock this thing in in a straight position so, the, so your trolling motor doesn't turn. Now, if you want to steer it by just grabbing the head of the trolling motor and turning it, you can. But if you're putting this in a Hobie, I don't see why you would do that. Hobies have, you know, their rudder control already. So... If you're 
if you have this locked in a straight position and you have your rudders, you can just steer with your rudders and it's a whole lot easier and a whole lot better. It's just like you would be steering with your Mirage Drive anyway. So what you want to do is you just want to drill the hole in the center of the cassette, slide the, slide the cassette over the shaft that you've already shortened, put the head unit back on. These are really simple to wire up and unwire. It's a red wire and a black wire. There's nothing hard. These do have a reverse, a forward, and a high and a low. Uh, I believe this will get up to about three and a half to four miles an hour on a calm, you know, a calm water, and you can just cruise. You know, you can cruise around, scan banks, scan, you know, have your fish finder on, and just ride around and find some spots that you want to mark or just cover. You know, go across the lake. So, to build this, all you have to do is after, like I said, after you got this put together, it just slides directly down in, just like your Mirage Drive would, clicks into place, and to power this one. This one has a cigarette lighter plug on the end. So I just put a 12 volt power outlet and I'll pull you guys off the tripod here in just a second and do you know a good walkthrough. But I put a power outlet in the front. So this, I pop it into place. I plug it into that. On the inside of my kayak, I have the wires running from the power outlet to the back, which comes out of a Hobie plug in the back to an SAE adapter to where I have my battery pack. And I'll show you exactly how I got the battery pack built in the back. I'm going to be upgrading this soon to a lighter battery, but for now I'm just using a deep cycle battery in a box that I put together, you know, just so I could use the trolling motor for now. So what I'm going to do now is I'll take you guys off the tripod and walk you through exactly how I have it set up, how I have it powered, and then we'll hop on the water and see how it does. All right, so here's a closer look. You can see it's the Sevlor SBM. I'm not sure what that stands for, but it's at 18. Here is where I've got my power outlet. It's just a simple outlet. Just drilled a hole and put it in. Nothing complicated, nothing hard. And this is a little tool that I had to put together just for this trolling motor. I'll show you exactly what this little weird thing is for in just a minute. Let's pull this out. So I can show you exactly where I mounted this. Hopefully there's enough light. So you can see it's just got the red and black wire. They just run straight to the back of the boat and this is my 12 volt power outlet that i have screwed in right here super easy this you can get this off amazon i think it's about 10 bucks and the wires run all the way through the kayak and they come out back here in the back and what i did is i put a sae plug on the back now as you can see i also i've got two batteries i've got this battery box here and i have my good old ice hole yak and shack power box this is what i use to control all everything else i charge my phone battery keep my gopro charged run my Lorentz unit everything runs off of this the battery that i'm going to show you in the back let's put this down this battery is what i use to run just the trolling motor now all this is is a regular battery box a marine battery box and i got on amazon and i'll link everything in the description below if you want to do this but they have this flush mount SAE female port. And all you do is you take your regular SAE plug, you plug it directly into the side of that, you got power going to the trolling motor. It's super simple to do this. But anyway, so it's four screws. It comes with all four screws. I just drilled a hole into the top of this box. I've got it loose now so you can see. And then it just comes straight out. Red and black wire goes to the pot red to the positive black to the negative got the battery strapped down in the box this is just a duracell deep cycle marine boat battery uh, i'm waiting on ice hole power now this don't let this sticker fool you this is not an ice hole power battery box i just had some extra stickers and put it on there I'm waiting on them they're working on one right now that's specifically specifically for kayak trolling motors when it comes out that's what's going to be going on the back here because they make some awesome battery packs but yeah, that's how you do it. So here's the plug. What I do is when we get, I get to where I go, I set my battery box in here. I cut a couple little holes here in the handle and I just got some draw straps. I just strap it to the back of the kayak. It's not really going anywhere. I plug it up, go to the front. See the green light come on right there. I have power, go forward. It's on two speed right now. You got a one and you got a two. I can show you under here what it looks like on. Can you see that, guys? Let's see if I can get a better angle for you. She's humming right now. 
if you can hear it. So you go to the center that's off. You got a reverse, and then you got your high and your low. Now, this little thing right here, this is a coat hanger with some tubing on it, just some plastic tubing to help it keep from bending up on me when I take it with me. But what this is for is sometimes, if you do this build, you know, when you're coming up on shallow water, you've got to pull this up just like you would your Mirage Drive. You've got to pull it up out of the way so that you don't run it into the ground and tear anything up. Same, same goes for this. This is super short. You know, it's, as you can see, it's, it's not sticking down very low at all. But you still, you don't want to run this up on the bank whenever you're getting back to the boat ramp and you're getting out or if you're just pulling off to take a break. you gotta, you got to be quick. So a lot of times, let's see how it stopped just then. Okay, so it stopped good right there, straight up and down. And what I mean by that, sometimes that propeller right there, I hope this is a good shot for y'all. It's hard to film this under the boat. Let's see. There you go. So this propeller right here, sometimes it will stop just like that, sideways. And what happens is, is when you unclip it and you try to pull this straight up, it's not going to fit through the hole sideways and you're stuck. So what I had to do was make me a little tool that I keep in the front hatch if this happens, and I'll show you what I mean. So let's say we just pulled up. I have to do this with one hand, guys, so sorry. So let's say we just pulled up. I'm going to unclip my cassette, and I'm going to try to pull this thing up. That's as far as I get. I can't get this thing out. Now I'm coming up on the bank. What do I do? What this is for, oh, it's going to be so hard to do with one hand, is you stick it down through the side with the hook. You hook the propeller and then you just pull straight up. And when you pull it straight back up like that, all it does is pull your propeller straight up and down so you can easily slide this in and out. It, it's something that you definitely want to have in here. Uh, if you don't have something on your kayak to do this with and you run into this situation, the best thing to do is stay in the deep water and pulse this you know make it turn and then keep trying to get it up because eventually it will stop in the up and down position you know you got a good 50 50 shot that it's going to stop like this or the prop's going to stop like this so you can just pulse it until it gets to the right spot or you can just make you a little cheap coat hanger keep it on the boat if it happens you just pull it up straighten your propeller and you're good to go so as you can see, this one is way easier than the last one I did on the Vibe Sea Ghost 130. This one is just not as technical. I don't have as many moving parts as I need. I basically just drilled a hole in the cassette, put a motor in it, ran the wire to the battery, and bada boom, bada bing, you're good to go. I did have to make sure that I built me this little handy dandy doohickey here. Y'all, make sure you name it for me and put it in the comments below, and I'll write the name that I pick on the side of it. I always got to make sure I bring it with me when I take the motor out. Uh, so now I guess what I'm going to do is we're going to warp over to the lake and show you how good this thing operates on the water. So let's go. So we made it to the water and of course I've got the Mirage Drive in right now. I'm just trying to get across the lake real quick before we pop in the trolling motor and see how it does. It's a little bit windy, it's not too bad. I'd say it's about one or two miles an hour right now. When I first pulled up it was pretty windy. So I'm going to take it over on the other side of this little mountain here. I don't know if y'all can see it or not, the way the camera angle is, but there's a little mountain here that's blocking the wind a little bit. So we can see how it does in calm water and then we'll take it out into the little bit of wind that we got and try it. Uh, I couldn't come out here even though it's literally 12 o'clock there's no clouds over the Sun it is not the perfect time at all to catch fish I still brought a couple of rods you can't come to the water and not fish some so after I finish shooting today I'm gonna do some fishing I brought my tackle I brought oh and that that reminds me I just had these sent to me uh, from Runkle it is their new waterproof line tackle boxes and they got the gasket that goes all the way around them and they hold this is a 3600 i think and they've got a bunch of different sizes and they're very cheap they're a lot cheaper than the other 
waterproof boxes that are out right now. They've got the same latches, the same seals of all the high dollar ones. Four latches all the way around. And it's uh, by a company called Runkel. And I'm gonna link them. They've got a bunch of different sizes and options to choose from. Uh, and it's on Amazon too. So I'm gonna link everything in the video description below. They've got tackle, they've got boxes. They sent me a couple of these when they first come out. And I've been using them for a few weeks now. And they're doing really good. They're holding up really well compared to the other water type boxes that I've got. They're, I don't see any difference at all besides the price. These are a lot cheaper. So links in the description if you're interested in trying out these new Runkle boxes. And they're tinted too. So I think it, it helps with the lures. Like if these are out in the sun, the sun's not going to, you know, bake the inside as bad because of the tint. I don't know. It's a guess anyway. But check them out. Links in the description. I've got a couple of them. I got some smaller ones coming too because I like them so much I ordered some more. So yeah, I'm going to do some fishing. But that's not why we're here. Why we're here is to test out this trolling motor. Got it with me right here. I will say that there's a couple of dings in the prop. I don't know if y'all can see them. But there's definitely a little nick. I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not. But I guess this is as good a spot as any. Let's pop this thing in and see how it does. Get my shoes out the way. I gotta be very careful with this because I do not want to drop my Mirage Drive. Controller motor is in. Let me slide the Mirage up right here. Get it plugged up. She's got juice. I was trying to put my, I just tried to put my feet in the pedals, but there is none because it's a trailer motor. Let's try it out. Let's start off on one. Oh, and I brought my phone. So um, I didn't bring my GPS, my Lowrance. I left it at home. I don't have the new power cord yet. I've got the transducer, but I don't have the new power cord so I can swap it back and forth from the boat to here. But I do have an app, a GPS app. And that's what we're going to use today to see how fast we can get this so let's see let me find that app the app i'm using is called speedbox and it's really good i don't know if y'all can see it or not but if i quit shaking so much you might be able to see it and we're going to figure out gps wise how fast this thing's going to go we'll start off with one with no wind the wind's kind of died down right here so let's go forward with one and we'll give it a minute to pick up some speed and I feel the wind already. The wind's blowing in my face a little bit. And this is just on the first speed. As you can tell, I hope you guys can see that. We're running a mile an hour right now into the wind. Two miles an hour, I mean, into the wind. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me turn this camera a little bit more. All right, three miles an hour. And like I said, I'm controlling the steering with the rudder. So let's turn the rudder and see how good it turns. This is just the first speed. Now I do notice when you turn and then stop, it slows you down a lot before you take off. So we're on one right now. And the battery I'm using is, had a pretty good charge. I don't know if it was completely topped off, but it had a good charge. So. Now I can feel the wind in my face again here. All right, we're back to two miles an hour going the opposite way. All right, so it looks like two to three miles an hour is the first speed. So let's kill it. Switch it to two. It sounds like a big difference. Let's see how it does. All right, we're already at two miles an hour into the wind. We're moving right now. This should be definitely... Okay, there's three miles an hour. Let's see if we hit four before we get to this curve. We're moving along very good, y'all. Let's see if I can get a shot behind me. I don't know. I can't see the back of the camera, so I'm not really sure what I'm shooting right now. But We got a little wake behind the boat. You can see... I hope you can see this, and I'm not just showing you the phone for nothing, but it's three miles an hour into the wind, so now let's turn it. Well, it turns on a dime with these rudders. All right, so now 
Let's get out here with the wind. This is so great, especially for like this lake because when I fish tournaments here, I like to fish in the very back. And now that I have this, I can literally just hop in here, turn it on, and aim in that direction and just go. All right, we're moving. We're doing really good. I'll show you guys the wake. I'm gonna pull you guys off there in just a second and show you the wake behind the boat. But it's doing, <laughs> this thing's doing really good. All right, we're at four. Let me quit steering. Every time I turn it a little bit, I feel like it slows us, it slows us down just a little bit. So it looks like max speed is gonna be about four miles an hour. And that's, that's about what you get paddling or pedaling. And I'm not doing anything. I could probably turn it down to one. Yeah, there's four, almost four and a half right there. And the wind has completely died down. There's no wind on the water right now at all. I'll show you the wake that we're putting off. Can you see the wake? It is a little bit loud. Just the vibration on it. Y'all can probably hear that. Yeah. So to stop it, you just turn it off and you've seen it kick back right there. You go to one. You want to try reverse out. Let's go to reverse. It takes it a minute to get the uh, the momentum going, but once the momentum's going, we're we're chugging along now. Look at the way. Let's see if I can get it out here. We are definitely moving right now, backwards, and that's on one. Let's see if we can do some donuts backwards. Well, it don't turn as sharp backwards. All right, guys. Well, that is going to do it for this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you are interested or you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section below. Like I said, if you like this video, leave a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. And I'll see you guys on the next one.